President Trump has been trying to rewrite the timeline on his coronavirus response. I think our whole group has been spectacular. So here are the facts. In 2014, the Obama-Biden administration put together the Global Health Security Unit within the White House National Security Council. We have to put in place an infrastructure, not just here at home, but globally, that allows us to see it quickly, isolate it quickly, respond to it quickly. They also assembled a 69-page pandemic response playbook. Now, in 2018, President Trump fired the Global Health Security Unit. I'm a business person. I don't like having thousands of people around when you don't need them. He also declined to renew CDC epidemic prevention funding, causing it to downsize in 39 countries, including China. Now, reporting from ABC suggests that intelligence officials were warning about this new disease emerging from China as early as November 2019. Nobody would have ever thought a thing like this could have happened. The administration has disputed that, but we know that at least as early as January 3rd, the White House National Security Council was briefed. In January, before Germany had a single case of the coronavirus, they began working on a test. January 8th, the CDC issued its first warning. On January 9th, the World Health Organization issued its first warning. And that night, President Trump held a rally. And America's future has never, ever looked brighter. On January 10th, the World Health Organization issued a comprehensive package of technical guidance with advice to all countries for how to detect, test, and manage potential cases. January 18th, Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar tried to have an urgent phone call with the president about the crisis. The president reportedly cut him off to berate him about his efforts to ban flavored vaping products. President Trump then hung up and went golfing. January 19th, President Trump went golfing again. January 20th, this was the first confirmed case of the coronavirus in the U.S. It was also the first confirmed case of the coronavirus in South Korea. The response of the two countries could not be more different. Within the first two weeks of that case, South Korea had implemented nationwide testing. Perhaps that's why, as of the beginning of May 2020, South Korea has fewer than 250 deaths, while the United States has had over 65,000. Given the difference in population size, you would expect the U.S. to have a death rate six times that of South Korea. Instead, it is over 250 times that of South Korea. On January 22nd, asked whether he was worried, President Trump said, No, we're not at all, and uh, we're, we have it totally under control. It's one person coming in from China, and we have it under control. It's uh, going to be just fine. On January 23rd, China shut down all of Wuhan. The World Health Organization held an international news conference, and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer called for a public health emergency. President Trump did not declare it. On January 24th, President Trump tweeted, China has been working hard to contain the coronavirus. The United States greatly appreciates their efforts and transparency. It will all work out well. On January 27th, Joe Biden wrote an op-ed warning that President Trump was failing to take this crisis seriously and needed to take more immediate action. On January 28th, Elizabeth Warren released her coronavirus plan. That night, President Trump held another rally. On January 29th, President Trump's trade advisor, Peter Navarro, sent a urgent White House memo warning of the risk of the virus. Only then, was a task force formed. January 30th, China locked down all of Hubei province. The World Health Organization declared a global health emergency. That night, President Trump held a rally. February 1st, Trump goes golfing. February 2nd, only then did a partial travel restriction on China go into effect. Well, we pretty much shut it down, coming in from China. 39 countries had travel restrictions on China earlier or at the same time, and many had much more comprehensive restrictions. At least 430,000 people arrived in the U.S. from China since January 1st. This included nearly 40,000 in the two months after President Trump's travel restrictions. While he claims that they saved thousands of lives, Dr. Jennifer Nuzzo, an epidemiologist at Johns Hopkins, says, quote, we have not seen any evidence that shows that the travel restrictions stopped or slowed down transmission of the virus. February 3rd, the World Health Organization released a strategic preparedness and response plan. 
February 5th, Secretary Azar requested $4 billion to fight the virus. This led to a shouting match in the White House. February 6th, the World Health Organization began distributing a quarter million tests around the world. The U.S. didn't want any. We'd produce our own. Around that time, the CDC produced a total of 90 tests, which turned out to be faulty. February 10th, President Trump proposed a budget that would cut CDC funding by 16%. That day, he said, The virus. They're working hard. Looks like by April, you know, in theory, when it gets a little warmer, it miraculously goes away. I hope that's true. February 15th, President Trump went golfing. February 19th, he held another rally. February 20th, he held another rally. February 23rd, Peter Navarro sounded another alarm within the White House, warning of the increasing probability of a full-blown COVID-19 pandemic. Only the next day does President Trump finally ask Congress for additional funding. But that same day, he tweeted, the coronavirus is very much under control in the USA. Stock market starting to look very good to me. On February 26th, You treat this like a flu because of all we've done, the risk to the American people remains very low. We think that in almost all cases, they're, the better we're getting, we have a total of 15. There were more than 15 cases that day, there were 60. And now there are 1.1 million. February 27th. It's going to disappear one day, it's like a miracle, it will disappear. February 28th. Now the Democrats are politicizing the coronavirus. You know that, right? coronavirus. And this is their new hoax. The very next day was the first confirmed U.S. death. Washington state declared a state of emergency. March 4th, he did an interview with Fox News where he suggested that it might be okay to go to work with the coronavirus. You know, we have thousands or hundreds of thousands of people that get better but just by, you know, sitting around and even going to work. Some of them go to work. But they get better. March 5th, California and Maryland declared states of emergency. March 6th, Kentucky and Utah declared states of emergency. He went to visit the CDC wearing a campaign hat and said, Anybody right now and yesterday, anybody that needs a test gets a test. We, they're there. They have the test. It wasn't true then. In May, it's still not true. March 7th, New York declares a state of emergency and President Trump goes golfing. March 8th, he golfed again. March 9th, he compared coronavirus to the flu in a tweet and suggested it would go away on its own. March 10th. It will go away, just stay calm, it will go away. On March 11th, the World Health Organization said it was not just a global health emergency, it was a pandemic. WHO has been assessing this outbreak around the clock and we're deeply concerned both by the alarming levels of spread and severity and by the alarming levels of inaction. COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. Only on March 13th does President Trump finally declare a national emergency. On March 16th, in a call with governors, he tells them respirators Ventilators, all of the equipment, try getting it yourselves. On March 17th, he finally admitted, this is a pandemic. And he told reporters, I've always known this is a, this is a real, this is a pandemic. I felt it was a pandemic long before it was called a pandemic. All you had to do is look at other countries. This is only days after he was still comparing it to the flu. On March 26th, President Trump delivered on his America First promise in a way no one could have wanted as the U.S. overtook the entire rest of the world in cases of coronavirus. As of the beginning of May, the U.S. has 1.1 million cases of the coronavirus and has suffered over 65,000 deaths. Analysis of data from the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation suggests that 90% of the U.S. deaths could have been prevented if the president had issued physical distancing guidelines even two weeks earlier when he had already been warned of the threat for months. With all of that, it's been an incredible period of time. We've done a fantastic job.